Hello friends, welcome. This message is going out to all my friends, all those of you that have never even listened to my channel or the messages that um, I feel like very strongly that the Lord is pouring out in me. Uh, not only me, but I have met people on my path in my my journey of what God is showing me. I have met hundreds of other people that God is pouring out His Spirit in them. Many of you may say, well, His Word clearly says that He will pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. Yes, it does. It says in the end that He will. In the book of Joel, it does say that. But um, I believe that throughout our entire lifetimes, because of my experience, um, sorry, the wind out here is... Um, blowing back and forth. Um, I believe from the time I was born and I became around the age of six and seven years old, God started drawing me to himself. He started showing me things that um, I didn't understand, but I believed more and more and more in time that the God of heaven was walking with me. I was drawn to him between the age of six and seven years old and uh, very quickly, uh, my family was involved in church early in my life. And uh, very quickly, I began to seek the Lord in movies because that's really all I could do as a child. I wasn't really old, or old enough or intelligent enough to read God's Word. I could only listen to stories and um, just to apply them to my mind and my heart and my life. But um, at a very young age, uh, I was uh, drawn to watch the movies about Jesus Christ and Moses. And um, I have two little sweet neighbor boys that are heading over here. They've kind of become friends with me. Anyway, I just wanted to say that I love you guys. And, and um, anyway, um, I'm ministering to them to let me finish my video. I want to read to you God's word. It says, love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Now then, I want to explain that a little bit. I have had a journey that I have been on um, about love and about conditional love, unconditional love. And I want to share with you, you the brothers and sisters in Christ, the body of Christ, you the church, you that may not even have came to Christ yet. Maybe you're lost. Well, I, I, this applies to you too. And I'm sure that everyone has had their hardships with love. And what is unconditional love? Let's talk about that first, and then let's talk about conditional love. Um, I need to share with you that unconditional love is to love someone. Let's just take someone with bipolar. I have bipolar um, family members, and um, one of them is one of my own children. And um, he was born with it. And um, I want to share with you that it takes great unconditional love to look past the day-to-day -day life journey of someone with such diseases as depression, such diseases as um, anger. Um, their thoughts are different from our thoughts. They see things in a different world than we see. Uh, they tend to view um, everything around them in a um, close, deep view compared to the person that just gets up and they start their life and their journey. Forgive me, I'm going to just be going back and forth, just being myself, staying comforted. So if, uh, I like to do my ministry outside as much as I can. Uh, I'm a country girl. And uh, my family taught me to uh, work hard for the money. And uh, don't worry about the heat or the cold. Just keep 
be, being busy. So that's who I am. That's who my granddaddy and my daddy made me to be. And not so much my mother, but my grandmother was a hard worker. Uh, my mother was more of a homebodied person, and so I learned the indoor things from her, but she didn't like the outdoors uh, too much. Uh, in her younger years, yes, she had a greenhouse, but as she became older, uh, she loved the indoors and still does to this day. She hates the heat. Um, anyway, so unconditional love is um, to be able to have someone in your life that you can love past what you see they're living through and in and past the way that they think and feel about themselves or others. That is unconditional love. It's a non-judgmental love. You're loving them and accepting them just the way they are. Now then, I find fault in many organizations, many businesses, many families, many neighborhoods, um, I find fault with a large percentage of the world having conditional love. And as you listen to this video and you run an organization, maybe you need to think about ministering to those that are in your organization and talk to them about unconditional love. Who do you welcome in to your organization? And who do you look at because of the way that they're dressed? Because maybe they have some whiskers on their face? Maybe their clothes are poor in style. Maybe their shoes are old and worn out. Maybe they have tattoos. Maybe they have too many earrings. These are all forms of conditional love, judgmental love. Um, really, I look at it as not love at all. You're depicting a person. And it's not fair to the individual that hasn't come to where we should be on a level of unconditional love. Yes, I too find myself looking at people with purple hair, pink hair, red hair, blue hair, yellow hair even. I've seen yellow hair. I've seen spiked hair that you would not believe. How did it get up there, okay? Um, I've seen earrings all over. Um, I've seen different colored fingernails all on one hand. Um, this is a new realm of time we're living in, and we need to accept these people just the way that they are. Tattoos, body piercings, hair colors, uh, gay, homosexual, lover of self, just hasn't found his or her way yet in life. Um, we need to learn to love them with an unconditional love, not a conditional love. How are we going to help lead them to Christ if we love them with a conditional love? And I think that this is important in order for our organizations, our family, uh, our businesses, the working world. I, I think that this is important that we look past the imperfections of others and we look at what they could be if they came to Christ. That needs to be the thought that needs to be the highest. How does Christ look at them? And so I want to share with you today, if you're listening to this video about unconditional love, I just want you to think about the way that you're living your life and the way that you're viewing others and um, that we just need to walk in the Spirit of Christ and start to change. We need to change right now. And we're running out of time to change. The Lord has sent me your way to help you to have unconditional love and not conditional love. I myself have been judged because of my disease. I have been looked upon in a bad way. I have had people not shake my hands, not look at me, not fellowship with me. And um, so I have to put myself in the shoes of everyone that has pink hair, blue hair, red hair, yellow hair, 
tattoos, body piercings of earrings all over. Uh, maybe you're poor and you wear the best clothes you have or maybe even the least clothes you have because you're hot, you're miserable, and you've not come to Christ yet and you don't know better to cover yourself up. Well, I love you just the way you are. So if you've tuned into my channel for the very first time, welcome. My name is Cindy and I live in Plantersville, Texas. And um, I'm not going to judge you. I want to love you. I want to help you. Will you be my new friend? And brothers and sisters, those of you that are on my channel that are my friends, I want to encourage you that as you're going out from door to door, church to church in your ministry, I want you to view these people as your sons and daughters, as your family members, and that no one would reject their own family. But yeah, we all tend to have that thought about our mind that we're looking at someone as to why are they smoking pot? Why are they doing drugs? Why are they drinking alcohol? Let's not look at that they are doing it. Let's look at why are they doing it, okay? Um, I see things in, within my own family, and I understand that my own family uses uh, alcohol not to get drunk, but they use it as medicine to help them to stay calm, to help them to have sleep at night. Uh, they use it as medicine. Why do people smoke pot? They use it as medicine to help calm their nerves, help them to keep from being angry if they have bipolar, and also to help them to have peace and joy and that their mind might be lessened with the torment of the day-to-day -day activities that they live in uh, considering the fact that OCD is very high in America I'm sure it is in other parts of the world uh, this is a terrible terrible disease to have and I have family members with OCD and so I understand where they're coming from and the things that they go through on a daily basis to stay clean and to prepare their food, to prepare their laundry, to prepare their everyday life is a living hell with some of them. And um, so let's begin a whole new journey today and let's learn to have unconditional love. Let's not look at a person in a particular way because they look a certain way, dress a certain way, or maybe they even act a certain way. They haven't came to Christ yet. They don't know how to act um, the appropriate way. Let's look beyond these things and let's love. Now then, the next video that I make, I'm reaching out to the church. Um, by the end of Labor Day, this whole weekend, uh, my journey with the Lord uh, is to um, go out to 300 stadiums. Now you're thinking, man, that's a lot of stadiums. Well, the Lord has shown me that every church, every large business is a stadium. But my focus is going to be only upon God's churches. And so that's my goal this weekend, is I will be marching out to any and all churches in my area. And if you have clicked on this video, and you've came to my channel because I've left a message at your front door on your church, then welcome to my channel. And I ask that you pray for me. I ask that you really consider every video uh, part of my ministry and part of the things that God has shown me. And um, will you let me just love you as a brother and sister in Christ? Will you let me love you as a pastor? And forgive me on and off because it is so dry out here. Um, I need to be all natural, all normal. And as I get an ant on me or the wind's blowing or I'm hot and sweaty, I'm going to be myself and I'm going to get right down to the nitty gritty and do what I need to do. So, uh, but anyway, welcome to my channel. And uh, I want to encourage you to listen to more and more videos and help me to help revive your church. Uh, I'm also here uh, as I'm leaving messages on your doors. Uh, I'm trying to physically go out into the world for my Lord and do revival at churches. So would you please begin to pray for me 
that I might carry out the Lord's work in any and every church that I can. Yes, you don't know me, so test me out a little bit at a time, and let me come and visit with you, invite me to lunch at your church, invite me to meet several of the people of your church, and let's fellowship together, and then let's do a women's revival. And men are welcome. I am not supposed to teach men, but uh, I have a dad, and I have a son, and I have many male family figures in my family, and they listen to me. Some of them were my grandchildren, and they still listen to me, and they're in their 20s now. And so um, I know what the Lord says about women speaking and preaching to men, and I don't call myself a preacher. I call myself a shepherd girl, and um, I love people, and I love the work that the Lord has laid on my heart. So let me love you. And um, I do not mind whatsoever for men to attend the revival. Matter of fact, I would love it if the pastor stayed and his deacons. And um, he would help me do the revival and minister to the women of the church. Because if I can fire up, if the Lord can fire up the women in your church, we are the ones that love to get things done. You guys do things too, but differently. We could help with gathering the food, the fellowship, uh, making printouts to get out in the community, copying them, cutting them, getting the church fired up and getting the church to get out in your community three to five miles out from your church into neighborhoods. You need to tag other churches. Uh, you need to tag the marketplace. We have things to do. We have work to do. So. Um, again, come back to my channel and let me love you with unconditional love. Let me be your friend, your sister in Christ. And let me just share with you the journey that God has led me on to show me all these things about Yellowstone, America, my own life. Uh, I have events in my own life in the past, things that God has showed me that actually has come to pass. And I'm talking about life and death experiences. Uh, including my dad, my grandmother, and my brother. I was all, all three of them, I was shown um, that they were going to die before they died and uh, how they were going to die. And those things actually happened to me. And one in particular was my grandmother and that the devil wanted to sift me. And so she was brought back to life and she was brain dead uh, when she died. Um, she was, or excuse me, when she was brought back to life, she was brain dead, thank God, because I had no idea that I would endure a sifting uh, from the devil himself that was allowed by God, and what a testimony that is. So if you have anyone in your church that's grieving and that's hurting, and a family member is being held down and they're not allowed to die, it could very well be a sift and a trying from the devil himself that God's allowing. I could help this person and pray with this person and minister to them and help them. Anyway, I love you guys. Come back uh, to my channel again and again. Spread the word and let us all stay busy for the Lord. For uh, Romans 13 verse 10 says, Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. So let's love unconditionally. And let's ditch conditional love from this day forward. Just repent and ask the Lord to forgive you. And let's change the face of the church and the face of your heart and your mind and the way that we all look at the world around us. They've been influenced by an evil world and we need to help them find the light of Christ. Will you help me? Will you help Jesus? Help them to find the light of Christ. Love you guys. Peace out for now. Come back to the next video and let me minister to you more. I praise the Lord that you've listened all the way to the end. Bye guys.